have never seen a company like SpaceX before. Their goal under Elon Musk is to make humanity a multi-planetary species by transporting and establishing a colony on Mars. They are attempting to accomplish this through the development of a fully reusable rocket to lower the cost of launches and make space and travel more accessible. To give some much needed perspective here, NASA's brand new SLS space launch system is estimated to cost over $4 billion per launch. The Starship on the other hand, which is SpaceX's massive reusable rocket, is estimated to cost only around $10 million per launch. This is a huge quantum leap for the entire industry and it's going to enable much, much cheaper space travel and really open the floodgates for commercial activities in space. Now, space travel and rocket development isn't cheap. SpaceX is funded in a mixture of private equity, government and civilian launch contracts, and Starlink Space Internet Service. SpaceX started launching Starlink satellites in 2019 using their reusable Falcon 9 rocket. Each rocket releases a batch of around 50 satellites at a time, and as of September 2022, there's about 2,300 of these Starlink satellites in orbit. Now, the network won't be at full capacity until there's about 10,000 satellites in orbit, so we still have quite a way to go. But even so, they have been slowly rolling out their service to the public in select areas. The advertised speed is between 50 and 200 megabits per second down and 10 to 20 up with a latency of 20 to 40 milliseconds. There are no data caps and the price is $110 per month for the basic service. Okay, so Starlink being a massive constellation of communication satellites orbiting the planet covering every square inch with a high quality signal it's clearly the future of not just internet, but global communication. We're already in the early phases of replacing cell towers with Starlink satellites. T-Mobile announced with SpaceX this initiative they're working on beginning in 2023, and Apple with their latest iPhone 14 are enabling some of these features. Now, at the current moment, these are very bare bone abilities, but you can clearly see how in the near future, this array of satellites is gonna make the previous generation of technology, which is ground-based infrastructure, look archaic and extremely outdated. So when it comes to the whole idea of new technology replacing old technology, the entire point of it is to increase the capabilities, scalability, and the future promise. And a global constellation of communication satellites can accomplish significantly more than the ground-based infrastructure we currently have. But of course, the downside associated with this is the added cost. Existing infrastructure is always going to be cheaper to operate than installing brand new systems. And once that ratio of cost to benefits is greater than the existing legacy technology, that's when it will fully take over due to simple market forces. This is probably a good time to mention that SpaceX isn't the first company to ever try and launch thousands of communication satellites. It's just that now technology is finally at the point via SpaceX's homegrown reusable rockets that this concept might just finally be financially feasible. But another great simple uh, constellation here is the first ever cell phone. This is what it looked like right here and it was the cutting edge communication technology back in the 1970s. And of course it was going up against the legacy technology of the day the landline. And in the early days of this, the landline was the clear winner when you did the cost benefit analysis. Because the new cell phone was super expensive and it didn't really work that well because the whole network and infrastructure was in its infancy. Now, of course, we know how this story ends. The cell phone grows to dominate the entire industry because it's just more capable of a device. But it takes time for that to happen for the average person. <laughs> People that benefit directly day one from these new technologies are those that can directly take advantage of those new capabilities that previously didn't exist. And today with Starlink, think about people that live mobile lives in RVs. Van life is pretty popular, and prior to Starlink, they didn't have a good internet solution. And the same goes for planes and boat use. 
We've also seen Starlink utilized in very unique ways in places like Ukraine to help prop up their critical communication infrastructure, as well as being used as a tool in places like Iran to counter government censorship. And another group of people that can fully take advantage of Starlink today are those that live in underdeveloped countries or in very isolated places that existing solutions don't reach. But let's be real, for most people watching this video right now on the internet, you probably live in a developed country, in a densely populated area, and already have access to quality and cheap infrastructure. You still can, of course, buy Starlink if you want to be ahead of the curve, an early adopter, and help support the development of this new technology. But just realize that that is a privileged position to be in in the first place. And most irrational actors that won't directly benefit from these new capabilities shouldn't pay the premium for this service. Starlink is $110 per month with a hardware fee of $600 initially. And I currently have Verizon Fios, it's 40 bucks a month, and I think it was 50 bucks to install it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did and you're still watching, I appreciate a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.